Hey, good morning everybody. Today I wanted to do something just a little bit different. I wanted to talk about what I'm doing with my uh, Razor electric scooter. So I've been kicking around on the Razor, having a good time with it. Um, it's 36 volt, it's a 500 watt system and I've seen that a bunch of people have overvolted theirs to 48 volts. So I wanted to do that with mine. So here's what it looks like at the moment. I took the uh, cover off and really I've just been looking at the connections. So there's one thing I did, I did modify the controller and the controller still works and I'll show you, I'll put a, a little uh, link or a little picture on what I did. Essentially there's two pads on the back of this controller, you take these four screws off, so there's four screws, one, two, three, four, and it's, there's this, uh, piece here, you can see it's kind of like glued in there, so if you flip it over, it's like glued into the back there. What I did is I ran a razor blade on the top of this to kind of break that seal, and on the bottom of this to break this seal down there, and then this whole top section comes off, and it pulls off, and it brings the controller with it. So this plastic piece is just left alone. But you do have to, all of this wiring is connected to this piece right here. So you'll take this whole section off and then flip it upside down. And once you do, I'll have a picture of what that looks like. And then what you do, so I soldered a, a connection between two of the pads there. Put it back together and it still works. And now, I need to work on the uh, controller. But real quick, <clears throat> just to show you what I did to take it apart, you have to take the seat off. The seat off, it's pretty easy. There's only three, there's five bolts. There's one here, one here on this side. There's gonna be a bolt on the other side right here. And then two bolts underneath the frame. And that's gonna be right here and here. Those are Allen wrenches. There you go, those two bolts right there, ding ding. And then, once you take that off, then there's some bolts on this piece. There's gonna be a couple of bolts on this side. There's gonna be a bolt here and a bolt right behind this thing. There's gonna be two bolts on top. There's gonna be eight bolts in total. So two here, two bolts on top, one on the bottom, and then on the other side there's only three bolts. Actually I have it backwards. There's going to be two bolts over here, two bolts on top, one on the bottom, then on this side there's just two bolts in front, one on the bottom. So there's eight bolts total. So then you can take that section off and once you do, then it's going to look like this. So then I just labeled each one of these. So I've labeled it one through seven. There's seven different connections. Still have a couple of connections that are not connected. So I need to just think about this a little bit. So this is, the batteries are connected in series. Hey, how's it going? So I did want to just do a quick little, uh, configuration of how we're going to wire the batteries. Um, so this is for the SX500. We're going to be wiring the SLA batteries in series. So the way that's going to work is we have a we have a 12 volt battery and it is 12 amp hours. So if we multiply this number together we can get our watt hours. So we get 144 watt hours with a single battery but we're gonna have four batteries so let's go ahead and draw that out um, we have four batteries just in a line here they may be arranged slightly differently on the bike but we're gonna have a positive and negative on each one of these these are our positive and negative terminals 
And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be connecting, we have our negative and our positive leads. They are going to be connected together on just a wire that's going to be going um, to the controller to power it. And then what we have to do is we have to connect these together. So each, each of these are 12 volts each, <coughs> 12 volts and 12 amp hours. So the first one is 12 volt. Coming from our negative side, we're going to take the positive and we're going to connect it to our negative lead. When we connect our positive lead to the negative lead, we're going to be doubling our voltage. So we're gonna go from 12 volts to 24 volts. And then we're going to do the same thing again on this one. We're going to connect our positive to our negative, and this is going to increase our voltage by one battery or by 12 volts. So we are at 36 volts now. And then we are going to take our positive and connect it to our negative lead. And this is going to finish our connection and we're going to have 48 volts by the end of it. So the power coming out of this connection right here is 48 volts. And it's 48 volts but it's still running because we're running in series, we haven't increased the amp hours. It's, we're multiplying this by 12 amp hours. So we have a total of 576 amp hours. That's how much battery capacity we have in this system. So a lot of times it's a, it's a lot easier to figure out how, what the amp, you know, amp hours is of a battery kind of tells you the capacity and how far you can go. Again, these are SLA batteries. They're going to be kind of heavy and we'll be pulling around a lot of weight and they're not quite as useful in terms of like the range as like a lithium battery, but we're still going to get the, the correct voltage or the, the over voltage voltage. We're going from 36 to 48 and we're going to see how the stock controller handles that. But I just wanted to write it down here so we had a clear picture of what we were trying to do. So positive to negative to positive, to negative, to positive. So we're connecting positive to negative, and we're connecting the positive up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another battery, and I'm gonna move this connection to the negative terminal on that battery, and then I'm gonna go positive to negative, to positive to negative. And that's how I'm going to connect my 48 volt connection. So that's what we have here. And then the thing that I had a, a question about today <coughs> was this is the back side <coughs> of that connection. So this is our charging terminal. Well, this is, oh, this just goes through the, uh, the controller. Wow, the controller manages the charge. So do I not have to connect this up at all? Does this just connect straight up? I think it does. Gosh, 36 volt rated voltage, 30 amp rated current. So we could just fry this controller if we bump it up to 48 volts. Like that's a possibility. And the motor is also a 36 volt motor. So we need two things. We need a new battery and a new charger because the old charger isn't gonna work with this new battery configuration. I got my battery. My battery is a wise valve regulated sealed lead acid battery. And the other batteries in here are vision batteries. 12 volt, 12 amp hour batteries. Very similar, just a different brand. All right, here's the plan. So I've got my soldering iron going. I have a 25 watt and a 40 watt soldering iron. I'm using the big 40 watt soldering iron, my big boy. And then I'm going to, looks like this is soldered on right here. I'm gonna desolder this. So this is the connection that's going out to here. This is giving me my 36 volts right here. So I'm gonna desolder this, and then I'm gonna solder this connection onto the negative terminal coming out here. And then I'm gonna take the positive terminal on this one, and I'm going to solder the positive 
to the negative here. And then it's gonna continue to loop, positive, negative. So I'm not even touching these connections over here. I'm literally just gonna solder one connection. So I've got a cable here. I'm going to add some heat shrink so I can heat shrink the ends. And then I'm gonna hot glue gun these so it's waterproof. And that's the plan. It's got my soldering iron, some solder. It's gonna take this connection and you can pull it from anything. It's like dryer cords that have some. I just have some extra, um, what gauge is this? <clears throat> the gauge isn't very big on what they're using so I don't think it needs to be anything fancy. Let's see, this is 10 gauge. So I'm using a 10 gauge wire. I think 10 gauge wire is a little bit too big. But that's okay. We're just gonna tin these real quick. And tinning works a lot better if you do have some flux. So if you don't have flux, I would definitely recommend you go get some flux. And you're like, but Dave, what's flux? I'll tell you. I don't know. Uh, it just makes it, it makes the solder melt a lot easier. So I'm gonna put some flux on this tip. And normally like solder will have like a flux core so you don't have to do it entirely. So I don't have any way to like hold this. So I'm just gonna use the solder here and I'm gonna just kind of feed the solder into this tip. And I'm gonna heat up this just a little bit. Now that it's kind of warmed up, we're actually gonna just let it, the solder melt into the tip. There we go, we tinned that side pretty good. There we go. So now we've tinned the ends. And you can tell if you tin the ends real good. If you grab the end and I, you know, try and twist it, you can see the, the tin or the solder has gone inside this wire and it's stiff in through here. And we know that I've got a good, I've got a good tin because I've soldered inside there. So we're looking good. So now we just need to desolder a couple of things, then solder this on here and we'll be done. It'll be great. That's all connected up. Um, we're just trying to fit everything inside there. So I put the the controller on the front, just using zip ties. I need to zip tie that down some more. That might work. I might need to take everything apart and redo it, but we'll, that's for a later date. The issue is with the charger that I purchased now. Um, the positive is on the bottom and the negative is on the on this side right here. But as you can see, there's like a one, two, and a three. So the positive is on three and the negative is on one. <clears throat> the positive should be on one and the negative should be on two. So I need to rewire that because that's the way it's wired over here for our charge. <clears throat> our positive is on one, negative is on two. So we need to do the same thing here. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and do that. So I'll need to do some soldering then we'll uh, put this back together. Red appears to be negative and blue appears to be positive. All right, so it works. We got to put back together. I put a little uh, uh, tape on it just to cover the parts so it didn't actually fit. So I had to zip tie it a couple, in a couple places. Still need to like trim these off. I uh, put a little tape on the back just so we wouldn't get mud flinging from the rear tire. And then I just need to put the seat back on and then we'll be GTG. So uh, we'll do that. You know, I'm definitely not, I don't care how it looks. I just want it to be cool. I just want it to uh, work well. And I don't know how much I'm gonna be riding this around in the mud and dirt. So yeah, I and I think what I'm really gonna be doing eventually is swapping this out for a lithium ion one. But for now, they work great. So we're just gonna, charge this for a good 12 to 20 hours just to make sure all the batteries are have the same voltage and then uh, and then we'll be done so I got the bike all put together I got on it <clears throat> I hit the throttle button and the bike died and it won't power on now so I'm not sure what the issue is so I'm taking it apart I put a bunch of, kind of stupid, put a bunch of uh, tape on it so it would be protected against like dirt. 
I really should have gone out and done like a full blown test before I actually like packed it up. But I, I ran it while it was, uh, uh, while we had it just up and it was unloaded and it worked great. So it's just once we started putting load on it, that's when we had an issue. Uh, that's a little frustrating, I guess. So we're gonna take all this off and uh, we're gonna take it apart, get the voltmeter back out, try and figure it out. Here's the current problem. When I switch it on, normally you get lights right here. Switched on, no lights, no power. Unfortunate. All right, let's check this out. So I thought this might be the issue and turns out it is. Uh, not sure if you can see that, but that is a blown fuse. So 30 amp fuse, no good. Since we have a complete um, disregard for safety, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually just take all the fuses out of this because who needs fuses, right? So we're just gonna, like if we fry the controller, we fry the controller and we'll get a 48 volt controller. And then if we fry the motor, we'll get a 48 volt motor. But until then, we're just gonna run them. And we just, as soon as we applied power, we just went <laughs> pop this. So we took all the um, fuses that we had and we just cut them off and then we just soldered them together. So it's a direct connection. So we have direct connections here, here. I didn't even solder, I didn't even re-solder anything. I just cut them off and then just put them in. So we just have these connections, they're good. We put some uh, electrical tape on them. So I think they're good to go. I haven't even turned on the bike yet. So let's see if the bike turns back on. <sighs> ah, we have power again. Cool. All right, so yeah. All we need is a complete disregard for the controller's well-being and we should be good to go. Um, so I think I'm gonna try and put it back together. Well, I think I'm actually gonna run it as is and see how it goes and then we'll uh, put it together if it does work. So, ride report, I just took it for a little spin and it works. It works pretty well. With 30, eh, so we have 48 volts coming out and we have uh, with the 36 volt controller and the 36 volts um, motor. It's working. I did it, so removing the fuses was like the thing that fixed it for me. That's the answer, my friends. Um, yeah, this is definitely not advice. Do not do this at home. Do, yeah, don't do this. This is a bad idea, but it's working. And my charger is acting normal now. So before it would have it had double green lights and the fan wasn't spinning. Now after I've taken out all the fuses, everything seems to be working properly. We have the charge light, it's red. I'm not sure if you can see that, the fan's spinning, I can hear it and feel it. One thing you don't wanna do is turn the bike on while you're charging it. Doesn't seem to be an issue with the uh, with the standard charger, but this charger, uh, weird things happen. It starts to flash and make funny noises. So yeah, don't do that. So keep it powered off. So definitely need a little bit more TLC on this than you do on a normal thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back together and we'll do a wrap up. All right, let's wrap up. So we, uh, we did it. It actually works. Um, our bike looks like this. All right, so we've got the razor. It's all put back together. Um, looks pretty normal. So we have a little bit on top that's, uh, it's not quite shut, but it's like holding that battery that we put in sideways in. So it's, I think it's gonna work really well in terms of um, keeping the, holding the battery in place. Plus we've got it zip tied. So the only place where you can kind of tell that it's different is back here. I did put some uh, some tape. It was pretty close, but it wasn't ni quite as nice as before. So I put some tape there, uh, some Gorilla tape, just so when we start 
slinging mud over here with the back, with the rear tire, it won't, uh, it won't immediately go in there. Then we should probably look at the front here. <coughs> the controller is sitting right over here, inside here. Um, and there's a tiny little gap there. So we might want to consider, uh, and this screw isn't very far in. Maybe I'll try and screw that in more or something. I don't know. It also makes a kind of a space agey sound, uh, kind of a funky little sound when you're at low speeds. That's just inherent with the bike, I guess. And uh, in terms of the ride report, in terms of power, um, it doesn't feel, it feels different, but it's not that different. It's quite a bit more torquey on the low end. You can definitely feel that. And then on the high end, I think we just gained like two or three miles an hour. I'll have to do a, a speed run. Other people have done speed runs. It's gonna be like 20 miles an hour, I think, max. And we were at like 15, 16 um, prior to this. So it was funny because my little daughter, who's 60 pounds, she went out riding with me. I'm 200 pounds. And she took the standard bikes and we took off at the line. I, I thought I was just gonna slaughter her. And we actually accelerated at the same pace. <laughs> so you accelerate as fast as a 60 pound uh, child on this. And then I had a higher, higher top speed, which is never the case. So whenever we're riding together, I accelerate super slow and then she passes me going two or three miles an hour faster than me. And then we switched bikes, and then she was on the fast one, and I was on the slower one, and mine was dog slow, and she just, it rips with her. <laughs> like, she just went, pew, took off like a rocket. So that's pretty impressive. <clears throat> so I think if you did swap out, swap this uh, out for uh, like an e-bike battery, you know, like a lithium battery, drop 20 pounds, that would definitely make a big difference in terms of uh, performance, dro dropping weight you know, makes a big difference. So I guess I have my workout cut out for me. I, I need to lose 20 pounds <laughs> so I can get more performance out of it. Um, but yeah, but that's, that's kind of where we're at. And it's been, it's been a fun little project. All in price for this was $21 for the charger and $27 with tax um, for the uh, battery. So we're looking at like 48 bucks to overvolt this. So hopefully this helps you out a little bit. Um, that's kind of my, uh, just kind of going through my woes and the, you know, the, the time that I spent um, working on the bike, but it was, a, it was a fun little project. I enjoyed it. Um, we'll talk to you later.